In one of the previous videos we implemented simple pagination inside React and this is exactly how it looked like. We have a list of our pages and we can jump between them and the current page is being highlighted. A lot of people wrote that this is too simple because it is not suitable for the big applications where we have lots of pages. And actually this is true. This is why in this video we want to build several things. First of all we want to implement here previous next and also jump to first and last page and obviously disable them. And secondly we will limit the amount of pages that we show in order to make it working in the really big projects. So first of all let's look on the pagination and how it is working now. As you can see here I have 4 files. The most important is app.js, this is where we are calling our pagination component. What we must provide inside is our current page which is just a state outside, also total and limit. And this information we are typically getting from the API where we are fetching the list of our articles. And here we have our callback on page change which actually means our pagination component does not do any API calls or routing change. We simply propagate on the top the page that user clicked and here we change this page outside. The next thing that we have is pagination CSS. This is just a bunch of global styles for our pagination component. And here is our pagination JS. As you can see this is our markup. As we are getting here our total end limit, we can calculate our pages count and with the help of our range function we can get an array of numbers. These are exactly our pages that we are rendering here. So let's look on the function range. As you can see this is a function which gets start and end and then returns the array of numbers between these two numbers. And the last thing that we have here we have pagination item which is a component which renders one specific page. And here we are passing inside page, then current page and don't change event. And we have here pagination item on the top because it is a small component. So this is just a lee with span inside, click event and rendered page. And here we used class name library in order to generate classes for our lee. So we always apply here page item and active we are applying only when our page equals our current page. And this is how our project looks now. Our next step here will be to add previous and next buttons. And it is extremely easy to do because we already have our pagination item component that we can reuse and tune a little bit. This is why here I want to copy paste pagination item component fully and just paste it at the beginning before our array of pages. Now here in side page we can simply write previous because this is just a text. As you can see here we simply render this page inside our span and nothing more. We also don't need here to pass key because this is not inside map. Also we are passing inside our current page and on page change. And actually on page change we must tune a little bit because this function does not get what pagination item we have. As you can see here on click inside on page change we are providing page. And as you see here we simply throw a string inside which means it won't work. What we want to do instead we want to say here on what page we jumped. This is why here we have an anonymous function and inside we are calling our on page change but we want to make current page minus one which actually means we are jumping to our previous page. Now let's copy paste this code and do exactly the same for our next page. So here we have our pagination item and the page is next, current page is totally fine and here on page change we have current page plus one. Let's check if it's working. As you can see here in browser we have a nice button previous and next. We can simply click here previous and it is working out of the box where here on the eighth element. The same is with next, it is working totally fine. Now let's implement exactly the same logic for first and last. This is why I want to copy paste here pagination item and just paste it before our previous and rename to first. And our on page change we can simply change our page to the first page, this is enough. Now we can copy paste this pagination item and put at the end. And here we want to name this page last and what we want to provide inside our on page change is the last page that we have. This is why here we can simply write inside pages.length and this will jump us to the last page. Let's check if it's working. 
So here now I can click first and I'm jumping to the first page and I can click last and I'm on the page 24. But here is the problem, now we can click on the next and then we are out, because actually we don't have 25th page, which actually means we must implement disabling of this button. How we can do that? We can implement inside our pagination item, new property for example is disabled. Now here let's simply add a new class disabled and here we are just checking for is disabled true. And actually we already have disabled class inside our pagination CSS. So here you can find disabled on our page item. This is exactly what we are writing here. We are adding our disabled class when our pagination item is disabled. And this is totally correct because we don't want to calculate inside if it is disabled or not. Now we simply need to calculate it outside. And in order to do that we can create here two additional properties. First of all is first page and this is simply current page equals one and also is last page. And if we are on the last page then our current page equals pages length. Now here for our first, previous, next and last we can simply add is disabled property. And here we must write our logic, in our case here it will be is first page. So if we are on the first page we are disabling this page. Now here we can copy paste is disabled and write here that we are disabling previous if we are on the first page. The same is for next and last, we are disabling it when we are on the last page and we are disabling our last page when we are on the last page. Let's check if it's working. I will reload the page and as you can see we are in broken state so we must reload the page. Here we are on the first page and now first and previous buttons are disabled, we can't click them. This is why here we can click next, this is totally fine, and we can click last and jump to 24th page. But we can't now click again because these two buttons are disabled and we successfully implemented previous next, first and last. Our next big feature here is to render less elements, which actually means if we're here for example on the 10th page, we don't want to see that many pages on the left and on the right, we just need to show like 3 or maybe 5 elements, which actually means we must cut our array of pages and not render all of these pages. We simply need to calculate where we are and we have different conditions. For example, if we are here on the first page, then we just need to render our first page and then several afterwards. If we are on the last page, we are doing exactly the same in other direction. If we are somewhere on the middle, it doesn't really matter, we simply take a little bit on the left and on the right. Now let's write exactly this logic. And in order to do that I want to create a new function here on the top and we can name it for example get pages cut which actually means we have our full array of pages, but we just cut needed segment. So here we need a bunch of properties which we are passing inside. This is why here I want to get an object with our properties and just destructure them. So what we need here first of all is pages count, secondly pages cut count and our current page. And you might ask, okay, pages count is clear, this is our all pages count, current page is our current page, and what is pages cut count? This is exactly how many pages you want to cut. For sure we could create a constant, like maybe 3 or 5 pages, but I want to make it dynamic, so you can configure it later. This is why from outside we must provide our pages cut. Now here inside we must write all conditions to fulfill all our needs. And the main idea is that this function must return for us an object with two properties. This is start and end. This is exactly what we are passing here inside range function. So we want to do exactly the same. But in order to do that we must create two additional properties. And this is floor and ceiling. So what I want to write here is ceiling. And this is just math seal. And we are using here pages cut count divide two. What are we doing here? Let's say that we want to render 5 elements, so we are rendering in total 5 items. So we are writing here 5 divide 2. This is 2 and a half. But now instead we are writing math sale to get its ceiling. This is why here we are getting 3. And now we also want to get a floor, so here we will have math floor. And here we are getting 2. And you will see why do we need these properties in a second. So here we have our ceiling which is math sale for pages cut count divide by 2. And here we have our floor. 
And here we can copy paste this code and make a floor property, which will be math.floor pages cut count divide by two. And now here I want to console log these two properties. So here is our ceiling property and here is our floor property. And now here I already want to try and use this function. This is why somewhere inside our pagination function I want to write one more console log. And here we will call our function for first if condition. This is why here I am writing if1 and I want to call here get pages cut and we must provide inside pages count. Then our pages cut count. So here we can write pages cut count for example 5. And the last one is our current page. Let's check in browser. I am reloading the page and we are getting here ceiling 3, floor 2. These are exactly correct numbers because we passed inside 5. And now here I want to write the first if condition. What will happen if we passed inside pages count which is less than our pages cut count? For example, our cut count is 5, but we just have one or two pages, which actually means we are coming here inside first if condition. So here I will write that if our pages count is less than our pages cut count, then here we want to return this logic. So we have here our start with first page and here our end will be just pages count plus one. But in order to check this if condition, we must change what we are passing inside our component. So here we are passing our total end limit, which is really big, which means we have 25 pages here. But here we can simply say that our total is three, which means we have three articles. So it means that we have just one page. Let's check if this if condition is working. I will reload the page and here we are getting ceiling 3, 2, this is totally fine. And here is our first if condition. We have start 1 and end 2. And if you are wondering why we have here end at 2, if we have just a first page, this is how our range function is working. I will just copy paste this code here and we have end minus start, which means we have 2 minus 1. And now here we have element plus start and our start is 1. In this case here we have just an array with 1, because we are not including our end inside the array. And this is exactly what we want to render, this is just one page, which actually means our if condition is correct. Our next case here will be for the beginning of our pagination, which actually means for example we are on the first page but we have a lot of pages. Now we don't need to render something on the left, we simply render the start so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or something like that. This is why here I want to write else if and inside we want to check ok, is current page bigger or equal 1 and our current page must be less or equal ceiling. And just to remind you, ceiling is a bigger half of our pages cut count. So what we want to return in this case is our start which will be still 1 and our end will be pages cut count plus 1. And again we have this plus 1 because of our range function, but here we are using pages cut count because we want to cut exactly this amount of pages. What we need to do now here we want to change back our total, for example 500 is completely correct and here I want to call our console log 2. So we have here our pages count, pages cut count and current page and we must get inside of our second if condition. Let's check if it's working. I will reload the page and here we are inside if2, this is totally correct, and we have here start1 and end6. And this is completely correct because in this case here we are just passing inside range function 6 minus 1 and here element plus 1, which actually means we have an array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is exactly the necessary cut that we want to render. Our next condition here is for the end of our pagination. This is why here else if and we are checking that our current page plus floor is bigger or equal our pages count, which actually means we are at the end. What we want to return here inside is again an object with our start and it will be our pages count minus pages cut count and as always plus one. And here we also have our end and it will be our pages count plus one. After we return this construction we must change our console log. So instead of if2 we want to write if3, but also inside our app.js we want to change our initial page to the end and it will be 24th page. Now when I reload the page as you can see here we are in if3 
And here we have our start 20 and the end 25. So if we will check inside our range function, we have 25, 20, and here plus 20, and we are getting an array from 20 to 24. These are exactly pages that we will render if we are at the end of our pagination. And our last case will be an else when we are inside the middle. This is why here I will simply write else, and here we want to return the construction for the middle. So here we have our start, and it will be current page minus ceiling plus 1. And here is our end, it is current page plus floor plus 1. And I won't even check it, because let's look on the real example if it is working or not. So we don't need here our console log, but we want to assign this get pages cut in some property. So here we created our property pages cut, but to remind you this is not an array of pages, we must create it. So I will just cut this pages property and put it here after pages cut, because what we want to put inside is pages cut dot start, and here we are passing pages cut dot end, which actually means inside our range function we are putting what we got back from our cutted function to generate an array of our pages. But as you can see here we have a problem because pages is being used previously, so we must also move our two other variables. And now here on the bottom we have still the same code pages map. Let's reload the page and check it. I will reload the page here, but don't have any errors. So as you can see our logic is working correctly, we are not rendering all our pages, but just the last one, and in total it is 5 pages, just like it was planned. But actually, as you can see, we broke our logic with next and last, because they are not disabled anymore. And this is happening because now in pages array, we don't have all our elements, we just have five of them. And obviously here we are checking is last page, current page equals pages length, and this is totally wrong. What we can use instead is just our pages count, because inside our pages count we still have an initial value. As you can see in browser now next and last are working as expected and they are disabled. Now if I will try to go to previous page, as you can see we are just rendering the page in the middle and two pages on the left and two on the right. If I will try to hit first, I am here on the first page and now I have four pages which are just after our first page. Which actually means we successfully implemented the cutted version of our pagination, which will suit the project of any amount of pages. And actually, if you are interested to know how to build a custom React slider, make sure to check this video also.